Now joining us here on Golf Talk Canada is Michael Block. Michael, welcome to GTC. Thanks, Adam. I appreciate you having me on. Absolutely, my friend. So we have a lot to discuss here. You were just in Montreal. Oh, making yet another hole in one. But overall for you, what was your experience like in Montreal? i uh, never been to Montreal before. Uh, I thought it was going to be a super quick trip, but I en well, ended up spending a, an extra day there. I got to kind of uh, tour the city. Uh, absolutely loved it. I got to say, uh, that's uh, one of my favorite cities I've ever been into. And I mean, I'm not just saying that by any means. Uh, the people there were just so respectful and nice and so proper. And just the food was fantastic. And the just everyone was everyone was very just awesome. Yeah, it was great. And the, the crowd there at the President's Cup was having a blast. So it was a good Friday to be there. Yeah, it certainly was for you now. We have to talk all about the Ultra Hole Challenge presented by Michelob Ultra. Yet another Hole in one by you. Walk us through the ace and how it happened. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's 90 yards away, a little island green. The coolest part of the whole situation, obviously, was the fact that I was I was there with Wayne Gretzky with me, you know, um, going between shots with Wayne. Uh, that's like a dream come true for uh, a guy like me who loves sports, uh, follows every sport there is. And I know just, you know, what Wayne means to the game of golf and also what he means to Canada. So, um for me to be there with him was absolutely amazing. And I knew that either wh whether he made the hole in one or I did, it was just going to be an absolute party, which it was. And it was crazy that I did it with only two shots to go. Talk about the pressure and it coming on. And Janet hit some great shots too, didn't she? Dude, Janet almost made a hole in one. <laughs> she left out, you know, I mean, yeah, Janet says, I mean, she's known for being a really solid golfer and she is, she's got a great swing. You could see it in, on the telecast. Uh, she almost, I mean, she she had the closest to the pin through the first, you know, 45 shots. I mean, it was it was impressive. It certainly was. So how many aces is that for you now? I don't know. I, I <laughs> you know, I don't really count some of them, you know. Um, I mean, Wayne and I were doing a content shoot, a similar distance, and I made a hole in one during that. And then, you know, I mean, I had 40, this is my 47th shot, so. I don't really, I usually pretty much kind of only super count the ones that happened in regulation play, 18 holes. Um, you know, these exhibition things, they're way more fun though, because it's on, you know, TV and it's, it's live streaming and I've got a huge crowd there pouring beer on me. So, I mean, you don't get that when you're out there playing golf with your buddies and it's just three people standing there. Right. And so, uh -huh. yep. yeah, for it to happen under the situations that it's happened for me is, is extremely crazy. Oh, absolutely. Now, you mentioned the atmosphere a little bit, the beers being poured on you. This was under the lights. Bob Weeks, who's one of our co-hosts here on Golf Talk Canada, was there on the microphone. Just overall, what was that experience, the atmosphere like for you that night? Yeah, we had the music going. Um, we had the lights on. It was in the dark. Um, you know, the cool part was I was able to place the pin this year. Oh. so I, Yeah, so I actually put it, I made sure it was right at 90 yards, number one. And then number two, we did have a little bit of a backstop this year, which was beautiful. Um, so I knew if I could get the ball past the hole in the right direction, it had an opportunity to go in the hole. And that's what happened on that one that actually went in. It bounced a little to the right, just passed it and spun in the back, back door it, which is pretty, pretty cool to do. And then I turn around and I have people flying through the air at me, which is pretty crazy. You know, I body slammed Janet, which, you know, <laughs> you know, so, you know. I, I didn't quite catch Janet how I should have, but I picked her up very quickly um, and, uh, yeah, gave Wayne a big hug and the party was on. Yeah, I, I didn't go to bed uh, until pretty late in the night. I don't blame you, my friend. I'm sure it was a good night overall. Now, for you, the last year and a half, well, it's been bonkers. It's been life-changing for you since that 2023 PGA Championship. But if you could pick one moment, one sort of pinch me moment out of everything that's happened to you, could you do that? No, um, I have, I have, I'm not kidding. Like 20 pinch me moments. I really, I really honestly do. I probably have 20 plus moments where if you would have told me this tw two years ago before the PGA happened, that any of those would have ever happened my entire lifetime. I would have never believed you, um, you know, from Jordan texting me from Freddie couples texting me and me playing a ton of golf with Freddie now, um, you know, my idol growing up as a golfer, him and Payne Stewart and Arnold Palmer were my guys. And I, I, I flew to Cutter, you know, to, to I flew to Cutter to do a three hour video with Max Verstappen 
<laughs> and Red Bull Racing. Uh, you know, I mean, I flew 18 hours, 18 hours back just for a three-hour video. Uh, you know, winning the DJ Khaled event, doing this with Wayne Gretzky. I mean, just the whole, all these things um, are just amazing experiences. Uh, you know, having Jack Nicholas make a 30-foot putt with my putter to win a Pro-Am in Cabo San Lucas. Having Tiger Woods talking trash to me while I'm over a shot. I mean, when I look back at it, yeah, it's absolutely insanity of what's happened. And I'm just, I feel so blessed that that I've been, had these opportunities that have happened. So it's cool. And speaking of insanity, I mean, the hole-in-one, playing with Rory McIlroy in the final group of the PGA Championship, the slam dunk, the seven iron, it's its like a movie script, my man. Yeah, that was. I mean, I didn't see it going either, by the way. <laughs> um, my caddy didn't even see it going. He, was, he had the range finder. He's looking. He thought it was at the bunker short. Uh, yeah, I mean, for when I look back at that and... To tell you the truth, I just watched about a month ago, I watched kind of the replay of that day for the first time in a year and a half. And I had tears in my eyes. I was sitting there. I was just going, I couldn't believe it because I was almost sitting back like I was uh, watching it from the outside and I didn't know who that guy was. And yeah, I mean, from the walk and talks I had with Scott Van Pelt and Jim Nance that I did on 14 on two different days and yeah, that was an amazing, amazing experience. And I uh, just, you know, I love seeing other people kind of, you know, thrive off of that. And people are practicing harder. People aren't quitting golf at a younger age when they see a guy that's 48 years old having the time of his life. So that gives a lot of people uh, a little bit of hope. I was just going to ask you that because, yeah, 48 years old, what's it like for you now? You're an inspiration because there's all of these club pros now all across the United States, all across the world, to be frank, seeing what you did and saying, hey, that could be me one day. Yeah. I mean, that's, I've had so many people reach out to me. Um, it's, it's crazy. Even amateur golfers now that are like, you know, they played college golf and they got their business and their life started and they haven't played in 10 years. And, you know, and they're like, you know, now I want to win, win the mid amateur and play in the masters, you know? So everyone has all these different avenues, right? How, how they've been inspired, whether it's winning their club championship or like I said, playing in the mid am or the USAM or, playing in the first PGA Tour event, stuff like that. Uh, it's been really cool. I, have, I haven't had just PGA professionals reach out. I've had a lot of just, you know, normal guys at home that have a family that they're like, you know, they've been sitting on the couch watching all these things. and like, you know what, I'm going to get off the couch and I'm going to try doing something. <laughs> oh, that's very well said. It's such a cool story, my man. A couple uh, before I'll let you go here. You can see the backdrop behind me. We are a, a tailor-made show. Uh, we're all decked out in tailor-made gear. We love our tailor-made product. I know you are as well. What's currently in the bag, Michael? Yeah, I put the new uh, CB irons in. Um, I was actually the first human being in the world to have them. Really? I played with them. Uh, yeah, I gained them uh, at the PGA Championship of Valhalla. Um, I had had the same MCs for literally 12 or 13 years. And it, this was the first set that I literally grabbed. I hit. And I had zero qualms about putting away my old set. They were gone uh, immediately. Um, this this set's in, insanely good. Um, no brainer. I've got the four iron, uh, the Pudi four iron, P U D I uh, four iron with the graphite shaft, which is a weapon because it's got. Everyone always thinks it's like my driving iron, but it's actually a four iron because I love it from like two hundred to two ten. Launches very very high, comes down like a wedge, which is my length playing in PJ Tour events and major championships. I've got two hundred yards into. It, I feel like on every single shot, right? Par three is two hundred to two twenty five. Par fives, I'm laying up with four hundred, and then on par fours, they're five hundred yards. I'm hitting four hundred into those. So that's a huge club to have. I, I still got the old M5 five wood. I've got last year's three wood. Yeah, I got the, my five was old too. And then I got the QI10. I don't know what they call it, but the dot, um, the nine degree dot. Yeah, it's uh, the tour head is all it is really compared to the normal QI10 is it's got the MOI moved slightly forward, so it takes down about two hundred RPMs a spin off of it. So it's got the forgiving face with a little less spin for the normal golfer. That driver heads perfectly fine. And they want that spin. That spin's going to get the ball up in the air. And it's also going to keep it straighter. Most pros want the ball to stay just, you know, in the air, but keep a little less spin because you have to have an extra amount of club head speed to get it launched mm -hmm. in order for that lack of spin to work. Because when you get a lot of amateurs out there and they're like, Oh, I got to get my spin down. Well, the ball's not good. If you don't have that club head speed of like 110 plus, the ball's never going to stay in the air. You need the ball to, you need that optimal launch, optimal spin rate. The spin is, you know, a lot of people get fit and they all go towards this 2000 RPM. If you miss the, a drive with only 2000 RPMs on it, 
it's going to go down. It's not, it's going to dive and your misses yeah. are going to be horrible. You want to be closer when I'm getting fit. You want to be closer to like 2,500 RPMs because you want to be consistent. You know, you want to be consistent and you also want to be long, but you got to kind of, you know, equal these out. Yeah, 100%. And hey, something we have in common, both of us gaming the CBs right now. I, I'm the same way. I, I put them in the bag about a month or so ago. Oh, I was actually yeah. peeling the plastic off playing in a Pro-Am, and they went right in the bag right away. I absolutely, absolutely love the Irons, love being a member of Team TaylorMade. So, Michael, you've had so, so many great accomplishments. My question for you is, what's next? Yeah, I leave tomorrow uh, for Chicago. I just got back. I've been gone for the last week. Um, I had to take a detour down in New Jersey after uh, Montreal. Just got back literally two days ago. Now I go to Chicago tomorrow for a tailor-made event at Conway Farms, um, which is going to be a blast. I never played there, and I've heard great things about that golf course. And I fly straight to Pinehurst for five days. We're taking 16 members from the club here to Pinehurst. Um, and then I fly directly from Pinehurst to Pebble Beach, uh, for three days for the Tiger Woods Invitational, I'll be doing a question and answer with Max Homa at the Beach Club there at Pebble Beach and then hitting uh, shots on a par three at MPCC uh, the following day uh, at Tiger's event. It all sounds like a pretty darn good itinerary, my man. Well, hey, uh, thank you so much for taking some time out of your very busy schedule. We really appreciate it. Congratulations again on yet another hole-in-one, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Adam. Look forward to getting back to Canada very, very soon.